let's say if you hold two balls in the air a 10 gram metal ball and a 5 gram metal ball and you hold it 5 feet above the ground so they're at the same height once you release it from rest both balls will be in free fall which one will hit the ground first is it the 10 gram ball or is it the 5 gram ball both objects will reach the ground at the same time the reason for that they're placed at the same height and they're under the influence of the same gravity Earth's gravity the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared which we'll talk more about that later but because everything is the same the height is the same the acceleration is the same if you take away air resistance both objects will hit the ground now let's say if we use an actual demonstration of a brick versus a flat piece of paper so the brick is a lot heavier than the flat piece of paper let's say it's a a one kilogram brick now with air resistance which one will hit the ground first the brick is gonna go straight down the paper might go this way then might go that way and then eventually it'll fall to the ground because of air resistance now what's gonna happen if you take the same brick but you crumpled up the paper so that it's very very small you take that same paper and crumple it up now the effects of air resistance on this paper will be greatly reduced if you crumple up the paper very tightly and you let it go these two will hit the ground approximately about the same time the greater the surface area of the paper the greater the effect of air resistance air resistance increases with surface area so once you crumple up the paper and then you drop it you'll see that it's about the same time when it reaches the ground with the brick the air resistance is greatly reduced so if you can eliminate air resistance completely then both objects should hit the ground at the exact same time because they're under the influence of the same gravity Earth's gravitational field now let's talk more about the acceleration due to gravity so if we have a ball and if we release it from rest it's gonna fall down and it's going to accelerate at the rate of 9.8 meters per second squared so if you recall acceleration tells you how fast the velocity is changing every second so initially the speed might be zero one second later the velocity is going to be negative 9.8 the speed is just positive 9.8 speed is always positive but velocity can be positive or negative dependent on the direction so because the ball is going in a negative y direction the velocity is negative now technically acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared because the object is going to accelerate in the negative y direction gravity pulls things down not up now two seconds later the velocity is going to be negative 19.6 meters per second so every second the velocity is changing the speed changes every every second the speed changes by 9.8 so as the ball drops notice that the velocity is decreasing by 9.8 it's becoming more and more negative the speed however is increasing keep in mind speed is positive so at this point the speed is positive 9.8 it's 19.6 and here it's positive 29.4 so an object in free fall that's under the influence of gravity the speed is increasing by 9.8 every second but the velocity because it's negative is decreasing by 9.8 every second so remember acceleration tells you how fast the velocity is changing every second now before we go over a few free fall problems we need to talk about the equations that you need to solve them so whenever an object is moving with constant speed this is the equation that you need to use d is equal to vt 
D can be used as distance or displacement. Just remember, distance is a scalar quantity. Displacement is a vector. So displacement can be positive or negative, but distance is always positive. So anytime an object is moving with constant speed, you can use this equation. Now, when an object is moving with constant acceleration, you can use any one of these four equations. V final is equal to V initial plus AT. V final could represent the final speed or final velocity. V initial is the initial speed or initial velocity. A is the acceleration, T is the time. So you may see me use the word speed and velocity interchangeably. Just remember that velocity is speed with direction. Speed is the scalar quantity. It can only be positive. Velocity can be positive or negative depending on what direction you're going. So for an object that's moving to the right, the velocity is positive. If the object moves to the left, the velocity is negative. But in free fall situations, we're dealing with motion in the y direction. When an object goes up, the velocity is positive. When it goes down, the velocity is negative. The next formula that you need to know is this one. D is equal to V initial T plus 1 half AT squared. And then there's this one. D is equal to 1 half V initial plus V final times T. And V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2 AD. So there are five formulas that you need to know. So these three plus this one and this equation only when an object is moving with constant speed. When it's moving with constant acceleration you can use these four equations. So let's start with this problem. A ball is dropped from rest on a cliff. What is the speed of the ball five seconds later? So let's say this is the cliff and here is the ball. So it falls down, but we don't know if it hits the ground at this point. We just want to find the speed five seconds later. So it's important to make a list of what you have and the variable that you need to find. What is the initial speed of the ball in this problem? Notice that the ball is dropped from rest. So the initial speed is zero. Our goal is to find the final speed. Now we know the time. The time is 5 seconds. And the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8. The acceleration due to gravity is in a negative y direction. So that's why it's negative. So what equation that was listed earlier has these four variables? The equation that we need is this one. V final is equal to V initial plus AT. V initial is 0, the acceleration is negative 9.8, and T is 5. So negative 9.8 times 5 is negative 45. I mean, not 45, but 49. So now, let's go back to the question. What is the speed of the ball? five seconds later. Now think about your answer. The answer, the speed, is positive 49 meters per second. Remember, speed cannot be negative, so you gotta make it positive. So this is the answer for part A. Now part B, what is the velocity of the ball at this time? The velocity is negative. So that's the velocity right there. It's negative 49 meters per second. Because the ball is moving in a negative y direction, velocity is negative. Remember, velocity is a vector quantity. Speed is scalar. Now let's move on to part C. How far does it travel during this time? What equation do you think we need to use? One equation that can help us define it is this one. D is equal to V initial T plus one-half AT squared. We already have the initial speed, we know the time, and we have the acceleration. 
So we have enough information to use this equation. So V initial is 0. 0 times T is just going to be 0. Acceleration is negative 9.8. And T is 5. So half of negative 9.8, that's negative 4.9. If you multiply that by 5 squared, that will give you a value of negative 122.5 meters. Now, what does this answer represent? That answer is not the distance traveled, but rather, it's the displacement. This is the answer for part D. Remember, displacement is a vector like velocity. It can be negative or positive. Because the object moves in a negative y direction, the displacement is negative. But to answer part C, how far does it travel during this time? Part C is not looking for the displacement. It's looking for the distance traveled. The distance is simply positive 122.5. Whenever an object moves in one direction, if it doesn't change direction, if it moves straight, the distance and displacement, they have the same value. They have the same magnitude, but the signs may be different depending on what direction it's going. But anytime you have an object that's moving in a straight line, the distance and displacement have the same numerical value. Just the signs might be different. So that's it for this problem. Number two, a ball is thrown downward at an initial speed of 15 meters per second from the top of a cliff. What is the speed and velocity of the ball eight seconds later? So this problem is similar to the last problem, only one key difference. The ball is not released from rest, rather, it's thrown down with an initial speed. And that initial speed is 15 meters per second. But let's use the initial velocity when dealing with this equation. So we're going to use negative 15 meters per second because it's going in the negative y direction. Our goal is to find the speed and velocity 8 seconds later. So we need to find the final velocity. The time is 8 seconds and the acceleration is still negative 9.8. So let's use the same equation to find the final velocity. So the initial velocity is negative 15 plus the acceleration of negative 9.8 multiplied by the time of 8 seconds. Negative 9.8 times 8, that's negative 78.4. So negative 15 plus negative 78.4, that's negative 93.4 meters per second. So this is the final velocity 8 seconds later. The speed, 8 seconds later, is simply positive 93.4. That's it. You just got to change the sign. Just remember, speed is always positive. Now, let's find the displacement and also the distance that it travels. So let's use the same equation as the first example. So d is equal to v initial t plus 1 half at squared. So V initial this time is negative 15, and T is 8. The acceleration is negative 9.8, and we're going to plug in 8 for T again. So negative 15 times 8, that's negative 120. Half of negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. So negative 4.9 times 8 squared. That's negative 313.6. So when adding these two together, you should get negative 433.6 meters. So this is the displacement of the ball during these eight seconds. Now the distance that it travels is positive 433.6 meters. So that's the distance that it travels. All you need to do is just make the answer positive. Number three, 
A stone is dropped from the top of a building and hits the ground five seconds later. How tall is the building? So let's start with a picture. So let's say that's the building and a stone is dropped from the top of a building. Our goal is to find the height of the building. The height of the building is basically the distance that the ball travels until it hits the ground. So if we could find the distance that it travels, we could find the height of the building. Now what equation should we use? In order to find out which equation to use, we need to make a list of everything that we have. Now it didn't say the stone is thrown down. So therefore, if the stone is dropped from the top of a building, we know it's dropped from rest, which means the initial speed is zero. We don't know what the final speed is, but we do have the time and we know the acceleration. For any object in free fall, any object that's fallen under the influence of gravity, this acceleration will always be the same value in the y direction. So our goal is to find d in the y direction, which is the same as the height. So once again, we could use this equation. d is equal to v initial t plus 1 half at squared. But because v initial is 0, we don't need this portion of the equation. So therefore, the height of the building, which we can replace with the displacement, the height of the building is going to be just 1 half at squared. For those of you who just want a simple formula uh, to find this answer. But I'm going to use d in this example. a is negative 9.8. t is 5. So negative 4.9, which is half of 9.8, times 5 squared. That's negative 122.5 meters. So keep in mind, that's the displacement of the ball. So what that means is that the ball travels 122.5 meters down before it hits the ground. So therefore, the height of the building is the same. But you don't need to describe the height of the building using a negative number. All you need to say is, is that um, the building is 122.5 meters tall. You don't have to say negative 122.5. That's not going to make any sense. So this is the height of the building. So now that you know how to do the last problem, go ahead and try this one. A stone is thrown downward from the top of a cliff at 24 meters per second and hits the ground 7 seconds later. How tall is the cliff? So it's no longer released from rest, but someone just throws it down. So therefore, we know that there is an initial speed, which is 24. But we're going to use the initial velocity which is negative 24 meters per second. We have the time it takes for it to hit the ground. That's 7 seconds. The acceleration in the y direction is still negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Our goal is to find the height of the cliff. So basically, we just need to find the displacement of the ball. So let's use the same formula. d is equal to v initial t plus 1 half at squared. This time, we need this portion of the equation. So v initial is negative 24, t is 7. a is the same. And now let's go ahead and find the answer. Negative 24 times 7, that's negative 168. And negative 4.9 times 7 squared, that's about negative 240. Point one. So the displacement of the ball is negative 408.1 meters. So what this means is that the ball travels 408.1 meters in a negative y direction. That's why it's negative. But the distance traveled, which is the height of the cliff, that's positive 408.1 meters. And that's the answer. A rock is released from rest on a 700 meter building. How long does it take to hit the ground? What is the speed and velocity of the ball 
just before it hits the ground. Well, let's start with a picture. So this time, we're given the height of the building. And initially, we need to find out how long does it take to hit the ground. So we got to find the time. Let's make a list of what we have. The rock is released from rest, so the initial speed is zero. We have the acceleration in the y direction. That's negative 9.8. We're looking for the time, but we do have the displacement. The displacement in the y direction is not positive 700, but it's negative 700 because the ball is moving in the negative y direction. So let's use this equation. d is equal to v initial t plus 1 half a t squared. Now d is negative 700. V initial fortunately is 0, so we can avoid using the quadratic equation. The acceleration is negative 9.8. So now all we got to do is find t. So half of 9.8 is 4.9. Now to isolate t squared, let's divide both sides by negative 4.9. So negative 700 divided by negative 4.9 is 142.86, and it's positive. So now let's take the square root of both sides. So t, I'm going to write it right here, is 11.95 seconds. So that's how long it takes for the rock to hit the ground. Now, what about part B? How can we find the speed and velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground? So we're looking for VF in this case. We have the initial speed, we have the acceleration, and we have the time. So therefore, we can use this familiar equation, v final is equal to v initial plus a t. So v initial is 0, the acceleration is negative 9.8, and we now have the time, which is 11.95 seconds. Negative 9.8 times 11.95 that's negative 117.1 meters per second. So this is the velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground. The speed of the ball before it hits the ground, it's the same number, but positive. It's positive 117.1 meters per second. So these are the two answers to part B.